the, the youngest, you know, the youngest preacher in here. No, I'm joking. I, I consider the elders seasoned. They're seasoned saints. Because I got yelled at for calling some of my people old. Hey, I'm old. I'm going to be 60 soon. I know I don't look that. I, I look good, don't I? Amen. <laughs> I went to the barber literally an hour before I got here. I said, thanks for making me pretty for tonight. <laughs> and uh, uh, Brother Tom stepped out. He, he said, you got a haircut? I go, yeah, all of them. <laughs> so after I'm done preaching, we will take uh, a, a brief intermission, allow everyone to you know, use the facilities, stretch their legs. Uh, I won't be preaching real long. Uh, and I say Brother Keith uh, will be taking over. Uh, I met Brother Keith back in uh, December of 1988. It's been a long time. And he, he was the assistant pastor there at Calvary Baptist Tabernacle. But him and I seemed to click. And, uh, you know, we served in ministries, a nursing home. Uh, and, and various other things, street preaching, door to door. Uh, so a lot of the first hand things uh, between uh, Brother Keith Young and Brother John Stockard. I, I mean, within a week, I, I got to say, uh, John Stockard took me uh, not in a very good neighborhood. And, and he's just walking down the middle of the parking lot. And he goes, okay, we're going to stop here. I said, oh, okay. He's like, do you have your Bible? Yeah. Do you have your gospel tracts? Yeah. And then the next thing I know, he's like, believe me, I'm the Lord Jesus Christ, and just starts preaching. I'm like, what? <laughs> What's going on here? I, I, I was never outspoken. Now my people tell me I talk too much. Uh, but nonetheless. <clears throat> But if you will, please open up your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 37. <clears throat> I apologize to my members that were here Sunday. I, I preached on this set of scriptures. Uh, I did make a few changes to it, but I was trying to... I asked the Lord, what do you want me to preach on? What do you want me to preach on? And he goes, well, what you preached on Sunday was good, and there's newer people that are going to be here. And our people... You know, a lot of times it goes in one ear and out the other. Amen. Uh, we get we get caught up in in our lives, and you know, kids are fussing, you get in an argument, you start listening to the news, and uh, you get distracted. And and Satan will just take that opportunity to remove that joy of the Lord from you. Yep. So in Ezekiel chapter thirty-seven. We're going to read verses 1 through 10. If you please stand for the reading of God's Word. <clears throat> and just bear with me a little bit. This new script of glasses I got, they messed up. And so sometimes the words get a little uh, blinding. Uh, but new prayers coming on the way. Amen? <clears throat> All right, Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord." So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, 
Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon their skin, their, the slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come humbly before you tonight. We just ask that you'd speak to each of us tonight. Put a guard upon my mouth as I bring forth your word, as you gave it to me. Uh, may your spirit uh, just enter in the hearts and, and minds uh, of your dear people here tonight, Lord. And when all is said and good, done, may it be said, it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. To you be the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. <clears throat> I did bring an illustration. Uh, it's not a bag of snakes. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can everybody vote? Dead bones. <laughs> Dead bones. <clears throat> the title of my message is Get Up, Lazy Bones. Amen. Get Up. Amen. Now this set of scriptures is actually speaking prophetically in the future, the restoration of Israel. Uh, the Davidic uh, reign on earth or the millennial reign and the judgments of the nations. But for us, it speaks of revival. And God's people yeah. need revival. Yes. This past week, I've been watching the, NR, uh, the RNC and I see these people and, and I listen to uh, some of the, uh, the words and the speech of uh, former President Trump and I saw all these people just tuned in. And I, and I was able to look at it this morning. He spoke for 100 minutes. A preacher speaks, speaks more than 45. It's like, uh, you know. And, and some people sometimes just get up and leave. But our God is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And when he speaks... We should listen. Yes, sir. And that's the problem with our nation. Yes, sir. You know, it's not polit politics. It's not economics and things like that. It, it's, it's a lack of the Word of God. Our great nation was founded upon the principles of, principles of the Bible, upon the sure word of prophecy, and what we have in our hands, this blessed book, the King James Bible, and, and I got away from saying King James Version. It's the King James Bible. Bible, okay, and it is true. I know one time uh, one of my people was cleaning, and they went. We have a bunch of extra scriptures. And he came up to me. He's like, "Hey, do you know there was an NIV Bible in here?" I said, "Well, pick it up and throw it in the trash because that's where it belongs." <laughs> but it's an application of these scriptures to us of revival. We need to get up. And go forth and preach the gospel. Yes. So God's word to you tonight. And like I say, I, I, I know everyone serves in some capacity. You go to church. But we can do more. Yeah. So God is saying, get up, lazy bones. Get up. Yeah. This world, this nation needs revival. They need the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that will solve all of our problems. Not, not the donkey, not the elephant, right. but the lamb. Yes, the lamb of God. Amen. That's good, brother. Christians are complacent in their Christian walk. We come to church, sit on our blessed assurance, put money in the offering plate, sing a couple of hymns. The scriptures and the preacher, the words go in one ear out the other, and you go back into the world and you wait till next Sunday. Well, what about we have service on Wednesday night? We have uh, ministries that we serve in nursing home. We have door-to-door uh, -door ministries. Uh, Saturday, we have Bible studies. Sunday, we have Sunday school. And then we have service at, at 11 o'clock. That's right. Amen. Oh, I can't get up, you know, for Sunday school at 10. Excuse after excuse. Do you think Jesus was complaining when he was nailed to a cross? No. And we need revival in our own life. You know, I know, I can do more. Amen. Sure, I get tired, but Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ. It strengthens me. Amen. 
See, God desires to bless His people. Amen. But we get in the way. Right. We get in the way all the time. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation yeah. to them which are on Christ Jesus, right. who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we need to get up, lazy bones, and go in the Spirit of God. Yeah. And serve. And ask God and cry unto Him to open up our spiritual eyes. Yeah. We, Amen. as Christians, don't have that sense of urgency to reach the lost. Yes, sir. People drop dead day after day. Right. Family members, relatives, co-workers, neighbors. And they're without Christ. Right. And too many of us Christians, we just get settled in and just enjoy our humble little churches, mm -hmm. the fellowship with you know our group. And that's why it's good here. So you know that your churches aren't alone. There's other ones that preach the Word of God, that serve the Lord, and are doing what they can by God's grace to win the lost. Amen. <clears throat> but we prevent the Spirit of God from moving us. Our land is full of dead bones, spiritually speaking. They know not Christ. That's right. And so it takes an army. Do you notice what it said in, in verse 10 of Ezekiel 37? It said, And the breath that came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Yes. We are soldiers for Christ. Yeah. I, Brother Keith, I can't remember if you went along with us when we went to Washington, D.C. for the street preaching thing, an army of, of men, young and old, we came together, prayed together, we sang hymns together, and we dispersed into all the, all the corners. We, we had preacher, street preachers on every corner. It was an exceeding great army. And even though our churches may not be, you know, number-wise huge, it only takes one. That's right. You see, revival starts with you, and then it goes to the home, and then it goes to the church, then it goes to the community, then it goes to the nation, and then all over the world. Amen. Jesus, before He went up to heaven, He said, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. Our church, for several years, uh, we were unable to continue to... Uh, uh, provide for the needs of missionaries. But thank God we're, we're up to three now by the grace of God. Amen. We have one in Italy, one in Spain, and one in Philippines. Amen. And it's only by the grace of God. Amen. And because we as a church, our people, I see the urgency not only just to save you know, our local people, but all over the world. Amen. <clears throat> I went on a couple missionary trips myself mm -hmm. into Mexico and then uh, in Belize, mm -hmm. the British Honduras, preaching the Word of God, handing out uh, Bibles in Spanish, gospel tracts, mm -hmm. medical supplies and clothing and things like that. And, I, rem and I, I brushed up on my Spanish and I was able to lead a soul to Christ in their native tongue. Now that's the Spirit of God. Amen. So yes, I, I spoke in tongues. <laughs> yeah, the Holy Spirit was the interpreter. He led and guided me unto all truth so that this individual might receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. <clears throat> you don't have to turn there, but in... Uh, Isaiah 59 verse 14 it says judgment is turned away backward and justice standeth afar off for truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter you see the truth is fallen in the street because God's people have dropped the ball and we're not preaching the truth we're not going out winning souls we don't see the need or the urgency to win souls to the Lord Jesus Christ Isaiah 5.14 says, Hell hath enlarged herself. Amen. That's our fault. Because right. God has called us. Yes. Right. It's our responsibility. It's our duty. Not to kick back and relax. 
Amen. We're going to have all of eternity to sit and relax in heaven. Amen? Amen. And enjoy that mansion yeah. and the streets of gold and Amen. you know the rivers of life and uh, the tree of life and all that good stuff. Amen. The crowns and the jewels and the rewards we'll get which we will humbly cast at the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You want to make sure you have a crown. Right. You want to make sure it's bejeweled a little bit. Amen. You can't go up to heaven and say, oh, here, Jesus, here's my Burger King hat. <laughs> no, you want a crown. You want some jewels on it. And the Bible tells you how many crowns you can win and what you got to do to earn them. I'm not going to get into that tonight. And as of right now, thanks be to God, and God has given me that sense of urgency and that burden to win souls I've earned all five crowns. Amen. And I just and I'm not boasting. I, I just can't wait to get up get up there in heaven and say, here you go, Lord. Amen. They're yours. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. God is good, isn't he? <clears throat> so truth hath fallen in the streets. Hell hath enlarged yourself. You see. Revival starts at the house of God. It starts with the individuals in that house of God. Amen. Instead of just getting together for picnics and potlucks and fellowships and things like that. You know, this past year, uh, by God's grace, I've had a lot of people. Uh, I taught, I've been teaching soul winning classes. We've gone door to door. And, and God's just blessed us. Uh, the, the fruit will come. It will come. But if you don't go... That's right. You know, what is it in Romans? It's like, how shall they hear except someone be sent? That's right. And how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. Amen. And you don't have to be a preacher or a pastor to preach the gospel. That's right. You can just share your testimony. You can just share some of the scriptures with them. Yeah. God can use anybody. That's right. He can use children. Amen. I know uh, Taylor was telling me yesterday they, they were a family or something, and one of her, her kids uh, spoke with a relative about, hey, you coming to church? That's right. <laughs> you know, out of the mouths of babes. That's right, amen. But no, we, I can't do that. I, you know, I might offend them. Fooey. That's right. If you don't say nothing, they're going to die and go to hell. That's right. And I've taught my people at, at, at the Great White Throne of Judgment. I don't know if you ever noticed that, but it's not until that's over that God wipes away the tears. So we as Christians, we're going we're gonna to witness those souls that are getting ready to be dropped into that lake of fire. And if it's someone you know, someone that knows you are a Christian and you never said nothing, they're going to turn around and stare right at you. Why didn't you ever tell me? So there are going to be tears in heaven, but thanks be to God, according to His mercy and grace, He'll wipe them away so we don't have to live eternally with that guilt and with that shame. But nonetheless, that's a scary thought. And we should sense that urgency. All right, that's my introduction. No, I'm joking. You know the story of Jonah. God called Jonah... God wanted revival in Nineveh. Yes. Jonah jo didn't want any part of it. Right. Well, God took care of that real quick. That's right. You don't tell God no. You don't run away from God. He'll find you. Right. He's all knowing, all seeing. You know, he'll take care of it. God was to determine the people of Nineveh, and they were a wicked nation. Yes, they were, That's right. Yes, they were. I hate to say it. But the United States is pretty much right there right now. If not, the same could be far worse. In Genesis 2, verse 7, when God formed man out of the dust of the ground, creating Adam, it said he breathed life into him. And that's what God told Ezekiel. The dead bones, which is a representative of not only lost individuals, but even the Christians. Mm -hmm. We're dead inside because we're not walking after the Spirit as we should. We're fulfilling the flesh. Yes. 
And as those bones, as he preached uh, uh, and called upon uh, the wind to breathe life into them, there was a great shaking and they stood up and they were an exceeding great army. Yeah. Right. And that's who we are. <laughs> you see, the Spirit stirred up those lifeless bones. We need the Spirit of God to stir us up. To help us see that urgency, that need. To overcome the fear. God hath not called us unto fear, but of power and of love. Amen? Amen. Well, I don't think any of us have a sound mind, brother. <laughs> we're, we're Christians, remember? We're, we're not right in the head to begin with. <clears throat> but the Spirit stirred up those lifeless bones. Yes, yes, amen. My wife, uh, she has to wear oxygen mm -hmm. at home and a portable. And sometimes when she has difficulty because of the humidity or her lungs just, you know, has a little cold, I have to turn the oxygen up for her. Some of us need our oxygen, our spirit turned up on high. Amen. 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 There is much work to be done. And it takes an army. It takes all of us. We can, we can do so much individually. The, the pastor of the church cannot do it all. That's right. And unfortunately, it's a small percentage of the people in the church that are doing the majority of the work. And it should not be so. That's right. Amen. We must pray that God will just move them. Amen. Because apparently they haven't been listening to the preaching. That's right. And if they are reading their Bible, they're not listening to the Spirit of God speak to them. Amen. So maybe if we pray for them Amen. or we invite them somewhere... And, and, and we fool them into serving the Lord. Amen. <laughs> hey, you want to go to lunch? Yeah, before we go, but we're going to hit, hit this neighborhood real quick, door to door, hand out tracks. Hey, as long as you're buying lunch, I'll go. <laughs> That's my motto. Amen. Our, our, small, our church, uh, we're not big, but in, in the past past a uh, year and a half uh, we did start a, a ministry in a nursing home uh, we got our feet in the door there and, and we go and hold service because you know what even the elderly that are in those facilities that, that right now they have no hope to ever get out it's a death sentence for them so we come and we sing to them and we, we preach to them we pray with them at Christmas time we went in there and sang Christmas carols to them just to stir them up a little bit let them feel that joy of the Lord and yeah. let them realize God still loves and cares for them. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As I said, we are commanded by Christ. Mm -hmm. It's the last thing he said. Mm -hmm. Go ye into all the world Amen. and preach the gospel. Amen. The last thing he said. Mm -hmm. You think that would resonate with people. But it doesn't. It's unfortunate. It's a shame. <clears throat> uh, I already wrote it out. Paul, Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 5, verse 7, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you? That you should not obey the truth. Now I said, I, I, I only know my people. I don't know you. But if you were serving the Lord, what made you stop? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm, getting too, uh, I'm getting too old for that. Or, oh, I, I did it for years. As, still, as long as you're still breathing that breath of life that God has given you, I don't care. You can preach Sunday school until you're 85 years old. God will give you the ability. That's right, so you have to ask yourself, what hinders me? Right. Well, I can't come to Sunday school because I, I got an early tea time. I, I might make it to church by 11. Hey, those are just excuses. That's right. So you're saying golf hindered you from going to the Lord? Or, you know, I, it's unfortunate these days, all the sports that the kids are involved in. Uh, back when we raised our kids... And there was football practice on Wednesday night, but the games were on Saturday. And I talked to the coach. He can go for an hour, and I'm picking him up, and I'm taking him to church. Yeah. 
the parents don't want to step on toes or interfere. Or, hey, my son wasn't that good anyway, so I knew he wasn't going to start. <laughs> Now, if he was the star quarterback, you know, the coach might have gave me a little rough time. No, I, 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 I'm joking. He was, he was all right. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to that scripture in Isaiah, truth has fallen in the streets. Christians are to blame for that. It's our responsibility. It's our duty to tell other people about the Lord Jesus Christ. I look at this weekend as an opportunity to rekindle that spirit, to rekindle that fire, to bring a sense of revival. I, I don't know about you, but our church doesn't sing like this. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes we have about this number of people, but they're not preaching. Pre they're not singing with zeal. They're not singing with fire. They're not singing as if the Holy Spirit of God has given them that joy. Jesus said, I've come to give life and life more abundantly. Is your life abundant? And if it's not, you're doing something wrong. Christians and people in general, and they blame the wife, the kids, and this and that. No, look in the mirror. That's right. Any problem that you're experiencing in your life, any difficulty, it starts with the man in the mirror. That's right. Amen. That's good, bro. You have to let right. the Spirit of God lead and guide you in all truth. Amen. And Amen. it comes first from here, and then the preached Word of God. Like that you right. need to be in this book on a regular basis. We don't miss meals, do we? No. But this should be your daily bread. That's right. Amen. And when you go through the scripture, it, it, you know, it's sweeter than honeycomb. It, it's like meat. It's like bread. It, it's, it's nourishing. Anyone, you know, that struggles with uh, being heavy, overweight, the scripture has a diet laid out for you. In instead of doing Weight Watchers and Lean Cuisines and all that kind of stuff, get into the Word of God. Our job is to win souls. Amen. Period. Thank you. It starts with the home. Amen. And then it's out into the world. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit God. You can do all things through Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Don't be a bag of bones. <laughs> Let the Spirit of God revive you and lift you up so you might go forth as an exceeding great army. We are soldiers for Christ. Yes. I was thinking about singing that song, and we might anyways. Uh, Sister Joy, you know onward Christian soldiers, right? Oh yeah, we're singing that. <laughs> That's right. The Bible says we are... To keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Amen. Amen. Which I get, you know, good testimony, you know, good walk. But we need to be spotted in the, in the world. We need, we need to go forth. Right. Stand on corners, going to the doors. Man, you, you would walk up somebody's house and you got a Bible in your hand and you're dressed up nice. Oh, it puts the fear of God in them. They slam that door. They turn the other way. And they head out the back door. Christians need to be spotted in the world trying to win souls. I'm almost done here. So we are to walk in the Spirit. We are to be a vessel unto honor. Amen. And as I said before, judgment begins at the house of God. That's right. Amen. And so where we come in, it's our responsibility. We're part of the Lord's army. Amen. We're part of that exceeding great army going forth. We need a renewed spirit in us. We need to pick ourselves up, shake off those dusty bones, shake off that dust on your Bible. Get into the church. That's right. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembly yourselves. Right. Now, granted, you can't make every, every you know, event and function and things like that, 
But at least the preaching of the Word of God, the teaching of the Word of God. Ever since my wife and I were saved and right around December of 88, we've gone to every Sunday school, every preaching service. When churches had Sunday night, we used to have Sunday night, Sunday night service, Wednesday night service, Saturday Bible studies. I didn't get tired of it. I was surrounded by God's people. Right. And they're the best people in the world. Amen? Right. Amen. Now think about this. And I promise I'm done. You all know Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, right? right. Amen. I'm pretty positive he made some changes in his life. <laughs> his new life. Amen. Does not God, when he saved you, give you new life Amen. you're a new creature in Christ well sometimes in our Christian walk we stray away from the things that we ought to be doing That's right. and so we need that revival Lazarus had a personal revival courtesy of the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm sure he, he took off running not like Jonah away from God but he, he ran after Jesus Amen. and he said Lord, here am I Lord what can I do? Send me. Amen. So I encourage you today, as the Bible says, be still and know that he is God. Samuel, when he was a child, God was trying to get his attention. I said, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Are you hearing today? Are you listening to God? As I said, Lazarus, I'm pretty sure he made some changes in his life. Amen question is, will you? Amen. Will you glorify and honor God in your body, soul, and spirit? Amen. I encourage you today, get up, lazy bones. Amen. Get up. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessed word. I pray, Lord, you've spoken to hearts today. May you bring conviction upon those that have been lacking, slacking, if you will. Lord, we need to see the urgency of a lost and dying world. When I saw thousands upon thousands at the delegation last night, standing on their feet, eager to hear every word out of the speaker's mouth for almost two hours, we can't even, we get antsy if we're at church longer than an hour and a half. Lord, help us to have a personal revival. Yes. Because revival is infectious. It starts with one, goes to the home, goes to the church, to the community, to the nation, to all over the world. You have not come back yet, and there still is time to have revival. So, Lord, help us to get up off our lazy bones and bring honor and glory unto you. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.